Hello and welcome to Elden Ring The Ultimate Guide Part 35. Today it is Dragon Barrel. If this is the first time you've watched any of our guides, we recommend you watch the video linked in the description. If you've got any tips of your own, stick them in the pinned tips comment for other people to look at. But otherwise, we are starting from the Calum Ruins Grace and we are heading east. And this is how we actually get to Dragon Barrel. Now, we've already gotten to Dragon Barrel in this guide, technically, because we picked up the map fragment. But we're just going to show you just in case, um, although it's fairly obvious how to get there, I suppose. So you head up to this ridge, you jump over the gap, now you're in Dragon's Barrel. And just ahead is the Grace, and then just ahead from here is the map fragment, which we're going to show you again. And definitely, you should really, if you've been to Kayla, just pick up the map fragment here, that way you get an overall picture of where you are. Because it does lop off a top of, uh, a top of Kayla, if you don't get this map fragment. So it would be right here at this little um, pillar, obelisk, I guess. So I guess we're just uh, grabbing these items that are in this pond. We're just going to ignore the fucking dragons because they're kind of irrelevant. And uh, yeah, because they, do, they don't have any breath attacks, I don't think. So they just kind of walk about and they're kind of slow as well. So not really much of a threat. But heading down to the north, down this slope, there's some items here, and it is, uh, so that's a Sombre Stone, so Sombre Stone 9, Dragon Grease, Arteria Leaf, and a Rune Arc. So the Sombre Stone 9 is pretty good, so that's worth while coming for. And it's certainly better going down the slope to get those items than perilously dropping down to get them. So now we just warped back to that grace that we were at, and um, now we are going to head northeast to the Tower of Caled. Now, we've already been to the Merchant in this area. But we're going to do that bit last, because we've already been there, and there's an incredibly tough boss associated with the merchant. So that is also why we're going to do that bit last. So hitting that scarab for a somber smith in stone 9. Uh, 8 rather, and then we're jumping over to the Tower of Caled off the route. And I'll let you take it from here, because I want a breath. No worries. Um, that Somber Stone 8 and 9 are two of the key components in getting a plus 9 Somber weapon this early. Because you can get 1 through 4 in Leonia, you can get the 5, 6 and 7 in Volcano Manor, which you can access as soon as you get to Leonia. And you can get the 8 and 9 right here, so you can get a plus 9 Somber weapon incredibly early, if you come to Dragon Barrow incredibly early. But as we jumped over to the Divine Tower, we have been using torrent to cross these archways there are occasionally gaps in these archways so keep an eye out for that because if you fall through them you will perish but that item over there was the only one on this level so we ascend a level and do the same thing again a couple of times as we go around um there are some items on here that are easy to miss i think there's a newman's rune wrapped around the back um I think there was a rune arc, and there might be a stone sword key, but I may be misremembering that, but you'll see in the footage. Well, we picked up a stone um, sword key. Well, that was the first thing we picked up. Ah, I, that was I wasn't one. misremembering. No, but the enemies that are peppered around on here are... Um, they're actually quite tough. Dragon Barrow is not an easy area. Yeah. So if you did um, want to come here early, like, we have Radan's rune. We've had it since we beat him, but the enemies on the... Uh, Divine Tower and in Dragon Barrow in general are scaled very, very highly. They're much, much tougher than they are in Kaled. So getting access to Radan's Runes effect, which gives you 15% increased HP, FP, and stamina, um, is doable. We only had to fight two enemies along the way, and even then you could theoretically have just run past them. But uh, yeah, it, it might present a challenge. So at this stage in the game, we're more than prepared to be taking them on. So there's the Newman's rune, and uh, specifically we grabbed this grace so we could get the Newman's rune and then just warp back to it, as opposed to having to jump over that gap again and go back up the ladder. So it was just a little bit quicker. And now, as ever, it is on to the top of the tower to be able to activate Radan's rune. Like we've said, you could have done this pretty much immediately after uh, doing Radan. Granted, but we really couldn't be arsed backtracking, and it's really not that big a deal. Um... So, yeah, and then it would also, like, kind of put the guide out of, like, order or whatever, so it's just, sometimes it is preferable to do things out of order, but for the sake of the guide and, and like, the, the readability of it, we, we just kept it to the Kaylee, the, the Dragon Battle episode. But, thankfully, we are at an appropriate level for doing uh, Dragon Barrow. 
which is good. Uh, as highlighted by the fact that we're able to two-shot these guys. Um, after Radan, we would not be able to two-shot these guys whatsoever. Um, and also, the Ernest. boss at the bottom of this area is actually really tough if you want to do it immediately after Radan. There are ways and means you could make it much, much easier if you were trying to do it underleveled. Um, so, spoiler alert, but the boss at the bottom of here is a godskin apostle. Um, being that it's a godskin enemy, it is vulnerable to sleep. Incredibly vulnerable to sleep. So, as long as you had a decent amount of bleed buildup, or you had the ability to scarlet rot it, or poison it, or something along those lines, you could, in theory, rot it, put it to sleep, wait for the rot to run off, um, rot it again, put it to sleep. You could do it that way. Um, it's just more hassle than it's worth. I mean, maybe we'll do a video highlighting, like, doing things really out of order, using really cheesy methods. Yeah, I think that'd be a fun, a fun thing to cover. But we came down as far as we could go. We've taken the lift up, and then in this, in this area, there is a ladder that is hilariously easy to miss. You caught a glimpse of it there as we ran straight past it immediately yeah. and had to double back. <laughs> <laughs> so this ladder's now the shortcut, I guess, quote unquote. Well, it's a shortcut if you die to the enemy at the bottom of the ladder, which is another Black Flame Monk. So, um, speaking of the Black Flame Monks, they can drop their armor set as well as the Monk's Flame Mace, I believe. Um, we've also fought some Radan soldiers who can drop the Surcoat, the Helmet, the Gauntlets, the Greaves, the Lord Swan Straight Sword, the Heavy Crossbow, the War Pick, the Lord Swan Shield or Brass Shield, depending on which one they're wielding. Um, as well as bolts and various smithing stones, but you're never ever going to farm them for that since you can just buy them. Yeah, this is, this is true. And it does drop all those things well remembered. <laughs> We've said it enough times now, that's just ingrained in my brain. I hear those words in my sleep. <laughs> so, the cool thing is about these drops is you don't die to those ones specifically. Um, and now, we can take this lift down. I think it goes without saying, you should just be looking at what we've been doing. It's going to be far more easy for you to just look and copy what we're doing rather than going off the voice or just kind of talking about some tertiary stuff. But now we're down at the bottom, we're going to get prepared for the boss, which is, as we said, um... God's going to apostle. Thank you. Uh, there's, another, there's no worries. There's another Black Flame Monk along the way. They really just put him here to take an Estus Flask off you, and this is the first one we've seen wielding the Flame Blade. You can actually farm it here, I believe. Uh, actually, the other um, one was wielding the flame blade. <laughs> what? Yeah. Ah, oh, right, okay. Th yeah, scratch what I said about it dropping the flame mace. It can't because it wasn't wielding it, but I believe these two can drop the flame blade. Um, if anybody knows better in the comments, please correct me if I'm wrong. So, as we have uh, been doing godskin uh, enemies, we know that they're weak to sleep, as you said earlier. So, sadly, we've only got one sleep pot. But that's still kind of okay uh, as Lion's Claw. Finally, we've actually equipped it and you're going to see how good it is. Now, th the cool thing is if you have one sleep pot in your inventory, the uh, the Mimic tier will use that sleep pot multiple times. It has infinite uses of items that you have. But as we're at an appropriate level, um, the honestly, the Godskin Apostle is actually super easy at this level. Um, we take an appropriate amount of damage and we deal a good chunk of damage to them just with our weapons generally. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's just kind of like in Deep Root Depths, dealer's choice with what weapon arts you want to use. Um, the Great Stars are just kind of good enough, to be honest. So you could have indeed used a Stormcaller plus Blood Flame Blade would have absolutely melted it. Um... And we do show that technique a little bit later in the guide. Because we don't want to use the exact same. Because as we've said, the uh, the guide is to be viewed as a whole. So we don't want to use the exact same technique every time we do a similar boss. So that way we can kind of show a range of different ways of beating it. So, we okay, so we've got a lot of time to talk about this. You saw that stone there. And there's been multiple of these in the game where there's a stone that you need to get a big heavy enemy, you need to bait them over to the stone to break it, right? So the closest thing is this dragon here. And yes, you can indeed 
you, you can indeed very slowly drag this dragon over to the stone and it takes forever. Don't worry, I do speed this up. But the point is, is that this is an excruciating process that you don't need to go through, apparently. What you can do is that you can just walk over to the stone, stand directly next to it, touching it, quit out, load back in, and if you remember in the, um, the Frenzy Flame bit of the subterranean shunning grounds where we done that technique to destroy those little tents, it's the same thing. So when you load back in, the destroy things around you bubble happens when you load back in so you don't get caught in in game geometry i suppose uh and then that'll break the rock and then you can grab the smith the the extremely necessary three smithing stone fives <laughs> right while we're heading over to this next boss um it's just a battle mage. I'm really not going to waste any time telling you how to fight this thing. Just this is stand the easiest in front of bot. it and press L2, it will die. This is the easiest um, boss in the game. This one. Yeah, for the point in the game it's presented to you, absolutely fucking lootly it is. This is pathetic. So I'll talk about the drops that we get from... Uh, fucking look at that damage. That we got from the Godskin Apostle at the bottom of the tower. So we got its armor set. Its chest piece will boost the Scouring Black Flame incantation which is nice, and we also got the Godslayer's Greatsword, which is a Colossal Sword, which has the um, Black Flame, I can't remember the, the proper name of it, but the Ash of War is this big Black Flame swathe that hits exceptionally hard if you build for the weapon correctly. It is a Dexterity and Faith weapon, primarily. Very good. We also oh. got Battle Mage Hughes oh. as a um, Spirit Ash from defeating the easiest and weakest enemy in the entire area. Uh, is it is it the is it the boys? Is it the Mimic Tier? Is it Tish? No. So is it worth a fuck? No. Probably. I've actually never <laughs> used it, but I can't imagine that's, it's good. That's my stance on it. I mean, if you want to try him out, feel free, <laughs> but you're going to be sorely disappointed because he's not five little dudes with a great shield. So. As you saw us running up from the side of the cliff, there was this big mound to our right, which is now on, I guess, technically kind of on our left. Um, so on the top of the mound is these items here. So Spith and Stone 8, Stone Sword Key, uh, actually can, stuff that's kind of worth picking up. Um, so now we're going to head to Fort Faroth. Wow, I actually remembered something crazy. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, I just hope that that little bit of wonky edit was you kind of saw what was going on there, um, and pretty much the reason, uh, like I, I didn't go up that mound, so I had to splice in the earlier footage of when I did go up the mound. Speaking of splicing in earlier footage, I believe what we're doing here is prepping to kill the dragon. Um, as you can see, the armor set changed. We're not using the great stars. We have significantly lower stats. That's because we did this much, much earlier in the game while we were in Kaelid. Um And we're showing you that you would just use the same method at this point in the game. You would equip your fastest uh, weapon with high bleed buildup. You would just stand here and wait for those 13,400 damage ticks. Um, keep hitting it in the leg, and I have a window of opportunity here to talk about a way that you can abuse this. If you kill it by bleeding it nearer to its tail, um, what you can do is uh, get it down to very, very low HP, proc the last bleed to kill it, run back to the grace and sit down. When you stand up, you will have received 50,000 runes, and the dragon will still be there. So if you really wanted to, you could do this right at the start of the game, over and over and over again, until you were at a level you were comfortable with, or had enough runes to buy anything you wanted. That is something you can do. Pop the gold pick up Foulfoot. Very good idea to have them um, on your hotbar or easily accessible, so that when you kill a boss, you can get some more runes. When you kill a big sleepy dragon, you can get some more runes. That's really what those things are used for. Very useful consumable. Yeah. We also had the gold scarab on as well to get even more runes out of that. So we really got our money's worth out of killing that dragon. And Continuing we'll with the in. older footage, yeah. We're showing yeah. you clearing Fort Faroth. So you don't really need to fight any of the enemies in this area. It's kind of not really worth it, honestly. The only thing that you'd be missing out on was one of the Sigin Bat 
harpy things, so you'd be missing out on a rune. If you if you kill that, it'll drop a big rune, but otherwise, uh, it's kind of a bit of a nightmare of a room, actually, because of stuff that poisons you, all these bats are, like, just dancing about. It's, I'd actually probably recommend just not even fighting anything in there anyway. But we do get the Dectus Medallion, which, at th getting it at this point in the game just is kind of pointless, because you would almost certainly, if you've been following the guide correctly, uh, you've already been to this Plateau, so if you've somehow followed the guide but didn't get the Dectus Medallion and then went to Altus Plateau, getting it just now literally means nothing. So... I have a sneaking suspicion the reason they put that here was because when you're a brand new player and you don't know anything about the game, you'll progress to Dec... Um, instead of going up the Dectus Lift, you'll progress to Altus by using the... Uh, Ruin Storm Precipice, which you should anyway because you get good smithing stones out of it. Here's where you get the Radigan Saw Seal, by the way. Um, but then when you come back to do Dragon Barrow at a level you're appropriate to be doing it at, um, you would find the second half of the Dectus Medallion, so you would know for subsequent playthroughs that if you wanted to go to Waltus early, you could come here and get it immediately. I think that's really what they were trying to do. They were showing Maybe. you something in your first playthrough that you could remember for your second playthrough, and then progress the game in a different way. So it gives you a bit of variety in your gameplay. To me, it really feels like the Dectus Medallion should have been, should, should have been in like Red Main Castle instead of here, personally. I think that would have made a bit more sense. <clears throat> I mean, I don't give a shit if it makes more sense lore-wise or not, who cares, but in terms of gameplay-wise, I think it would make a little bit more sense because having an item that lets you get to an area that is scaled lower in difficulty than this area just feels really strange to me. But, um, whatever. Anyway, now we are heading, uh, so it was, I guess we kind of headed a little bit sort of south-ish, and now there's this sort of road that lead, that's kind of on the side of um, Dragon Barrow, and we're just going to take that around, and there's a grace here, and then the road splits uh, just at or after the grace. Uh, I, I'm going to say just before the grace it splits. Um, and uh, if you go up, that takes you to an air tree avatar and progress. I suppose this also does progress the level, but there is a little dungeon down here that has like a, a very strange enemy in it. There's a rune bear that has an insane amount of HP. So, uh, yeah. Uh, this is also a fucking shit dungeon as well, but we're gonna do it. And it is Dragon Barrow Cave. Yeah, you no know, kidding about the room by having a shitload of HP. It actually has more HP than Millennia. <laughs> um, so honestly, my advice here would be, I think what we're going to do is we're going to kill it. What you could do, very easily, because there's only a couple of items hidden behind where it is. It's in a very narrow passage, so it's a pain in the ass to fight. What you could do very easily is uh, put it to sleep. So you could just put it to sleep, that is true. But what we saw us do there was make some iron jar aromatics. Now these are actually going to come in very useful for a boss later in this area. And we've, all, we've mentioned the iron jar aromatics previously as a way of uh, defeating the rune bears. I actually mentioned it in the last episode. So if you take an iron jar aromatic, it will give you an insane amount of poise. It will slow your movement down, but you I think it, I think you take less damage as well. But you can't be staggered out your animations, or if you can, it takes a lot more. So, as a result, the rune bears can't knock you on your arse. Uh, although, it, his staggering is that like, Jesus Christ, these things are tough. But, uh, generally speaking, it means that you can just wail on these things. You don't need to give a single fuck. You don't take anywhere near as much damage. You actually regen a lot of health because of the great stars giving you back health on hit. So, you can just... You, this, this is how you beat it. You just spam wild strikes plus blood flame blade. And that's how you beat rune bears. This is the method. And I tried so many different methods. And that is by far the fucking best one. Yeah. So, so what the iron jar aromatic does is, like, like Tony was saying, it makes it harder for enemies to stagger you. Significantly harder for them to stagger you. It gives you a bunch of physical resistance. It does, however, lower your lightning defense. So if you had the idea to, um, say you progressed a little further than us and you found Dragon Lord Blissidus X, for example... If you had the idea then to, oh, I'll just drink an iron jar aromatic and then his big lightning bolts won't hurt me. Yes, they will. 
So if anything, right we'll kill you even cave. faster. <laughs> so at the back of the cave, we picked up um, the bull goat talisman. And, increases uh, the amount of poise you have. It's a percentage increase, so the more poise you already have, the more poise you will get by equipping the talisman. So with that said, there's really not a lot more to do in Dragon Barrow Cave. I'm going to take out a few wolves. I think there's four of them in this room. And then grab the items and onto the boss. There's not a whole lot else here. The real boss of this cave, by the way, is that rune bear. And if you yeah. kill that, you can definitely kill this. Yeah, this boss is a, I thought it was a fucking joke, actually, to be honest. Uh, to the point that I even forgot it was this boss. I thought it was something way different. But yeah, it is just two beastmen. Wow, wow, we. I mean, Just it is free when you get a decent talisman out of it, I guess, so... It's... I'm not going to tell you how to do this, boss, right? This this does... This, this is just hit the guy. <laughs> Although Wild Strikes was proving a little ineffective, but he didn't give a shit about that. Yeah, he did, he did not hits. care at all. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's it. We get the Flame Drake Talisman, uh, the upgraded version, and then we're just warping back to the start. And then we have enough to up to level twice, incredibly. Wow, okay. I guess and there's a just... lot of runes on the go for uh, Dragon Mirror. Again, a lot of these bosses, some of the ones in particular in this area, are very easy. Um, that one's manageable to do at a lower level, and you've got Grail to kill for a bunch of runes. You've got an Erd Tree Avatar. That's piss easy. If you've been watching the guide, you know exactly how to fight them. Oh, um, this episode we get to show you the technique for fighting the Knight's Cavalry enemies. Oh, yes, indeed we do. I'm very excited. You know, this is a very interesting episode. We actually show you a lot of solidified strategies for a bunch of different enemies. That's quite cool. Hell yeah. So we show, So I think we just go straight to doing the Knight's Cavalry. Well, after this, we're going to straight to do the Rise puzzle, quote-unquote. Okay, so you use this Spirit Spring to jump onto the roof, and uh, that's that's this done. <laughs> <laughs> this one is very easy. Um, I think this is quite cool, though. I think it's a personally. memory stone. It is. It's great. I love it. Um... We could have, in theory, saved ourselves some time there by getting the grace at the bottom first. But <laughs> yeah. Since we, we, since we, we do in have fact to go all the way around. Too um, efficient. Yeah. Since we do have to go all the way around, I will say that you notice we got attacked by a couple of big summoned balls um, on the way here. There is a, a graven mass at the bottom of here. This enemy here. Um, killing this prevents the balls from spawning. They just won't spawn after you kill this. So I guess that's something we can talk about since we didn't pick the grace up. I guess, yeah. I've got to fill time, man. You're not giving me much to work with. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this, this, uh, this area is quite cool because we show you how to do the, the Knight's Cavalry, the Rune Bears, the Bell Baron Hunters, and the Air Tree Avatars. Yeah, we show you the technique for all of them, actually. And then as we well show as... you the technique for the, the dragons as well. Yeah, I was just about to say, there's also a wyvern-type dragon here. So, we are going to put on Thunderbolt, or Thunderstrike, I missed the name, I keep forgetting it. So then we're putting on the uh, the Dex tier, the Faith tier, oh no, sorry, the Dex, the Dex tier and the Holy Damage increase tier. Lightning. Lightning, Lightning damage, damage, yes. And then we are putting on the Lightning Scorpion Charm as well. So this just maximizes the amount of Lightning damage we're going to put out. And then we're swapping our shield for the Icon Shield. It's got a bit more stability. And it gives a little bit of HP regen, which is not, I mean, it's not super relevant, but like, it's something. And this is pretty much the setup. Um, you, could, you could use any great shield, really. The main thing is just having a, a solid shield plus a Thunderbolt. If anything, you might actually be better off with a different Great Shield if you have the Strength of Wield one, because um, you don't need to regen HP if you never lose any. And uh, the Icon Shield doesn't have 100% block. 
it trades that 100% block for the small amount of HP region. So we put on Golden Vow, and so I mean that's solid damage, and it's also damage that's like almost guaranteed. It can dodge it, don't get me wrong, but it is a lot easier hitting this thing with Thunderbolt than with like any other attack. Yeah, it takes away its greatest asset against you, which is the ability to escape. Because if it runs away and you're just using a melee build, you can't hit this thing anymore. Um, but Thunderbolt eliminates that weakness. Granted, it's not quick enough that you can just cast it willy-nilly, not in a situation like this. Um, we will show you us doing that um, for the next few Knights Cavalries, but for this one in particular, you can... Uh, you sort of have to time your attacks. When it starts running away from you, there's your best opportunity to use it. Yeah. Um, I will mention, since you're getting a very good visual demonstration of how this strategy works, I will say that you can basically insta-kill this Knight's Cavalry. Um, you can jump to the outside edge of the bridge on Torrent. You save quit near the uh, tree over there that you were seeing moments ago. It's on the right-hand side of the bridge as we're facing now. Um, there it is. Yeah, you jump to the outside edge of the bridge, you save quit. When it spawns, or when you load back in, it will spawn, spot you, do its leap attack, and jump off the side of the bridge to its death. So I tried to do it, and I couldn't, and I couldn't get it to work. Um, that it, is, it is clearly something that can work, I just wasn't able to get it to work myself, personally. But that is my preferred method for defeating the Knights Cavalry. If you've got your own method, then by all means, stick it in the comments. Uh, but I just like the reliability and the amount of damage that you can get in per hit with this uh, technique. Sure, you know, like, you could hit it with Lion's Claw or whatever. I mean, Lion's Claw is obviously great. I know we keep going on about it, but I, I still think that Thunderbolt is better. I just, yeah, big fan of it. So now we are switching to the uh, the method that we're going to use to kill the air tree avatar that's coming up. So we put on flame and strike, and we I think we switched out the the uh, the physic flask and the talisman. I think. Yes, we did. Uh, so that means we've got the fire scorpion charm on. We've got the strength crystal tier and the fire damage crystal tier because. Uh, I think he said fire damage is scales off strength, so having that extra strength gives you extra fire damage. And um, yeah, we're just going to show you us absolutely annihilating this air tree avatar. And I really wish we kind of showed this technique earlier in the guide. I, I do admit that, but the point is, is the guide's be taken as a whole, and now you can do this in every other subsequent playthrough. So uh, yeah, these things are so impossibly weak to fire damage. Flaming strike really just—it's it's actually funny. <laughs> it's, it's funny how strong this is. Yeah. You can also stack Flame Grant the strength because fire damage. Um, and you will see, we don't need the Mimic. Bang. That's a fifth of its health gone, one hit. <laughs> so we're dodging into the attacks. As you should be. Well, you should be dodging into the attacks. It's so hard for me to get over that reflex of dodging away. But yeah, you dodge the attack, Flame and Strike. Uh, when it does this attack, you want to start running away. Try and get behind something. And then roll into the attack. Bonk. Surprisingly, this thing didn't stagger during any of that. I can't wrap my head around that, but whatever. But yeah, as you can see, just fucking deleted. Like, it, it stood no chance. We got the upline hard tier and the uh, stone barb... Uh, was that Stone Barb cracked here? I think it was, yeah. Yeah, so the Opaline Hard Tier is actually a really good option for general play. It gives you a bunch of extra defense. Um, physical, Lightning, Fire, Holy, Magic, it gives you them all. So it's very, very good, and it lasts for three minutes. Um, and Stone Barb gives you, I think, increased poise damage, so you can break an enemy's stance easier. But since we're using Lion's Claw, Ground Slam, things that already do incredible stance damage, we don't need to rely on that, that um, Physic Tier. As well as the fact that it doesn't last very long, so it's sort of a waste of a slot for us. Like, there exists a possibility that maybe that allows you to, like, stagger placidious acts quicker or whatever, but it's just not necessary. So, we are going to use all of our runes. That's very important at this point, because we do plan on taking a death. Uh, maybe. It's, uh, 
it's a possible death anyway. Um, and this is, we're about to encounter a bafflingly unique enemy that is only in one area of the game and it is, you're going to see, right, so head to this spirit spring and then just jump straight at the edge of the cliff and then you want to try and fall all the way down to the bottom because trying to drop down to this cliff is a gigantic pain in the arse without dying. You're going to come here and we're going to get the uh, the rain of arrows, which is a, a painting item. So we've already got that painting. And then we're just going to jump off and die. That enemy that you saw there, the golem, is a unique golem that is only here, is incredibly difficult, and doesn't even drop anything unique. That golem should have been its own boss. It has an expanded moveset. It starts fucking firing lasers everywhere and all this kind of bullshit. For some reason, it's just chilling there. Completely wasted. Completely pointless. Doesn't give you anything. But trying to fight it is a huge pain. So we're not going to fight it. And instead, we're going to come here to this scarab. And <laughs> we're going to batter it with flame and strike. To get <laughs> bestial constitution. Uh, I believe based your constitution removes bleed and frost buildup, if I'm not mistaken. But you know what else removes frost buildup? Flame, flame cleanse me. Strength. Yeah. Flame cleanse me. Flame, uh, probably flame grant me strength. Why, why do I mix those names up? But yes, flame cleanse me removes frostbite. We're going to showcase another method we've already talked about at length, but it's using... Um, a great lance and spectral lance to stagger a dragon and then just annihilating its face with as much damage as you possibly can. Um, yeah, so we're just going to summon the mimic to you. So what we've done there is we two-handed the great stars with prayerful strike and then summoned the mimic tier. That way the mimic tier, the only Ash of War that can use, is prayerful strike. So that's a cool way of forcing the mimic tier into using an attack that is a good solid attack but also is an attack that heals itself. So this combination... Doing shit like this just makes the Mimic tier almost impossible to kill for certain bosses. It's really funny. So, instead of using um, the Great Stars, uh, we instead opted to show you that you can use Bloodblade as a replacement in case you don't have the Great Stars. Um, you're not using the single hit damage for the Katana. You're just using the bleed buildup of the katana and Nash of War. So you can use an unupgraded katana and this in order to just like drain massive amounts of HP off enemies. Uh, and because you don't care about the single hit damage really, you can just spam it until you uh, you get the bleed proc and just get that's where you're getting the damage from. So that's just a cool little alternative method for uh, taking care of the dragons. Yeah, nice and easy. Next Fuck enemy, not all... so easy. Yeah, there's a lot of bosses in this area, isn't there? Jesus Christ. Yeah. And the next two are a fucking doozy. Both of them are kind of a pain in the ass to kill. Yeah, yeah. Um, these might take a little more explaining. There's a few items to grab in this area. I'm just sorting our gear out at the moment, but there's a few items to grab in this area um, leading up to the boss. It's the one we ran past way back when in the f i think it was the very first part when we came here to grab a um golden seed and to get early access to the round table yep it's the black blade kindred but before that as i said there's a scarab hidden over here i think this one is a i want to say somber stone nine um as yeah and i think there's also a starlight shard at the far side of this section of dragon mirror yeah, um, there is. There is. Yeah, I don't oh, really think I, there's much I, of a cheese method for this particular Blackblade Kindred, which is, to be fair, it's called Blackblade Kindred, but it is essentially one of those giant gargoyle en enemies, such as like the one we fought on the capital outskirts, such as the one that we fought in the Seal for Aqueduct. Um, except it's black, I guess. <laughs> no, um, I mean, it's also dealing... It kind of deals destined death, but not really. It looks like destined death, but it actually is doing black flame to you. Which is interesting. 
So we're going to speak to Garank and then give him any death route we might have left over. Apparently we don't have any death route, so ignore that. But, but yeah, there's the boss out there, and I guess I guess we're going to prepare something. I'm going to assume we're going to use Lion's Claw, if I was the hazard, I guess. Good guess, via me. <laughs> yeah, and this is one of the more... Um, there's no real good way of cheesing this. So it's really just a case of making sure you have the highest damage options available, making sure you're dealing blunt damage, making sure you have a dependable Ash of War that you can't be knocked out of, Lion's Claw, yeah. and uh, then just go into town on it. A big part of the reason this one's so difficult, like I said, is the Black Flame effect, but it's also because the terrain in this arena, as you can see, is uneven at best. That's being charitable, and I'm describing it as uneven. The good news is that we do do decent damage to it. The problem is that he deals chunks to us, so you kind of just have to get your hits in when you can. Probably should have been spamming Lion's Claw a little bit more, but that would maybe uh, stagger him a little bit quicker than the, the jumping L ones. But regardless, um, like, look at that damage from a single hit from a boss. And that, and that was like being like hit on the backswing, you know? So if anybody has a particular cheese method for this guy, by all means, stick it in the comments. Um, oh god, the lines cross staggering him, very nice. And then taking the repost. Very close to finishing him off. We've still got plenty of flasks left. And one of the mercies of this one in particular, this enemy, is that there is a grace right there. So if it does kill you, it's not like you're taking a 10 minute run back to get to it. You You are quite literally right here yeah so if you do yeah. fight it and you decide you know what this, this isn't worth it you could just run and grab your runes come back to the race and then fuck off elsewhere because your reward for killing that i think we got the great sword and the axe or the yeah. great sword and the halberd the black blade versions um only the sword has a unique ash of war um and the unique ash of war for the sword is not very good um and the axe is just kind of bad. You can't change its Ash of War and it comes with, I think, Spinning Slash. So I'd just avoid fighting it entirely. The rewards really aren't worth it. The runes are nice, but it's more hassle than it's worth, I think. So this is uh, the, the drops that we have to do for this part, which this, I mean, this feels like illegal, what we're doing. This feels like we are an out-of-bounds part of the game, but nope, this is, in fact, the drops that you have to do in order to get a pretty... It's, I mean, I actually don't know if the item's good or not, but yeah. Um, so I think there's a very specific thing that you want to do as well. So you run over here, get the soft cotton, which theoretically, I think that lowers your fall damage. So that might help for this last bit, I guess. But you have to do a bit of a sort of weird pivot. You kind of want to jump into the wall. That way, yeah. And then from the this little alcove, you jump onto this pillar. And then you jump back into the wall again. And now this drop should be safe. Yeah. Your reward for all that hard work is the Cinque Dea. Um It's a dagger, which you cannot swap out the Ash of War, but it boosts the strength of bestial incantations, so the likes of Stone of Garank or Bestial Sling, uh, Beast Claw, things like that. Um, it boosts them by, I think, 10% as does the claw mark seal, so if you stack both, you get in a, a decent little damage buff there. And we also picked up the um, Dragon Crest Shield Talisman, which does lead me to believe that they intended you to come here quite early to grab those items, um, because you're getting the plus zero version of it in this zone, so. Yeah, that does make sense, yeah. I suppose, theoretically, you could just come here and grab both of those things immediately, straight from Limgrave. Um, but yeah, it's not items that we're gonna we're gonna use. I mean, the, 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 it's particularly not the Dragon Crest Shield Talisman, but we do eventually use the, um, the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman, I think it's called. Yeah, it is. Um, we okay. don't get that for some time, though. So pay attention to what we are doing just now, right? We put on the Lightning Damage Buff cracked here. We put on the HP Regen crack. Or no, I think we put on the Defense one, actually. That we just picked up. Then we put on the Lightning Scorpion Charm. 
then we are putting on the Dagger Talisman to enhance our criticals. And then uh, I think we're just taking the rest of those items off for weight purposes, I think, but I'm not entirely sure. Then we are putting on the Iron Jar Aromatic. And then we're putting on the, uh, the Icon Shield for the little bit of HP regen. And now we're going to put it to Nighttime. And you're going to see why we're stacking all of these effects. Because if you've came here, the, there's a Bell Baron Hunter at this Merchant Shack. So in order to get him to show up, we need to put it to night time. Then we need to rest again. And then that will make the Merchant go away. And now the Bell Baron Hunter will appear when we leave the shack. So we're going to put on our buffs. We're going to put on Flame Grab Me Strength. We're going to put on Golden Vow. We're going to drink our Physic Flask, which did give us the defense. It did give us the bubble tier, uh, so that's good. So the increased defense is, again, this guy hits like a fucking truck. So we've stacked all of this shit. We've put the Iron Jar Aromatic on, and now we are just spamming Lion's Claw. Now with all that, all, look at all the damage buffs. That is the amount of damage we're doing to this thing. That's kind of nothing compared to all the stuff that we're stacking right now. And... If without these buffs, without the defense increase, this guy would be doing so much fucking damage to us, you really have no idea. But this is absolutely, by and far, the best, most painless way of dealing with this guy. Now at this point, you probably want to heal up. And then you're just going to spam Lion's Claw yet again. Now our... Our aromatic wore off right at the end there, and you could see the amount of damage that we were taking from hits. Um, that is how you kill that thing. And you have to stack all of those things in order to get, like, to be this effective. Because he just does so much fucking damage to you, and has such a high amount of health. And the thing is, is that we are, like, so near the end of the game that we can't really get very much better in terms of like leveling up with our stats and our weapons and stuff so literally you just in order to be effective you have to do all of that shit in order to kill him yeah that is the most needlessly difficult enemy in the entire game in my opinion he is way overtuned for the area that he's in i think he's just um, way overtuned for the game <laughs> yeah, to be honest you might be right um we're coming back upgrading our gear um we got some smithing stones and such in this area, so... Um, popping some runes, because it's quicker to sell them than it is to pop them yourself. And then I think we'll be leveling up and that'll be us for the episode. I do want to say, actually, that Bell Bearing Hunter... Um, Ashes like Square Off work really well, because they give you a bunch of effective poise. They um, deal a lot of stance damage to the enemy as well. So I, myself, find Square Off to be quite a useful Ash of War there, but... The technique we've showed you has made that borderline painless. We really yeah. weren't in any danger at any point, and without the setup we had, we definitely could have been. So this is us putting our original gear back on. But that is pretty much it for Dragon Barrow. Uh, hopefully, our technique for beating the Bell Baron Hunter will be helpful to you. And okay, there we go, that's Dragon Barrow. Done. Join us in part 36, where we're going to be doing the Forbidden Lands. Now, other than liking and subscribing, you can follow us on Twitter. You can also follow us on Twitch, where we will be streaming once the DLC is out. And if you're feeling especially generous, you can sling us some cash on Patreon if you're so inclined. But the best thing you can do is just comment anything. Just comment anything. Go on. Anything. Two seconds. Go on. Anyway, catch you in the next part.